I'd like to introduce to you the members of the group. First, the trio, and we're going to start with our bassist, whose name is, whose name is, <laughs> I've only known him for, for like a zillion years. You would think I just met him. This is Chip Jackson. <laughs> our drummer, <laughs> that's embarrassing, <laughs> our drummer is Winnard Harper. This gentleman is also someone I've known for a very long time. His name is John Blake, Jr. Now today, we're going to focus on the place of the violin in jazz. The violin was one of the first instruments to be used in jazz, and along with the banjo, it was one of the most popular and portable instruments used in early jazz players. The sound of the violin is very close to the sound of the human voice. Uh, uh, so much of the music which was sung in the early days was also played on the violin because you could get the same kind of feeling. You could demonstrate uh, the kinds of things that you were trying to say musically. So with the help of John Blake, we're going to show you how the violin is used today. Now, John, as you may notice, has uh, a violin which is, looks a little different. Uh, you can kind of see through it <laughs> like that. Now, that's because it's an electronic instrument. Would you tell us a little about that? Yes. <clears throat> this has a volume knob on it and also has some electronic devices in it where a cord plugs into those devices and then it goes directly from here into the amplifier, which amplifies the sound. Now, of course, I have an ac my acoustic violin as well, but I don't use a pickup or I uh, just use maybe a microphone. Before you pick up the acoustic, would you uh, play something on this without, the, without turning the volume up? Okay. I can't hear that. I can't hear that. And so, I'm working hard, too. <laughs> no, turn it up. <laughs> Okay. All right. So that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, in the early days before we had this kind of amplification, you couldn't use the violins with the horns. And that's the right. And that's right. Now we can be as loud as anybody <laughs> in the band. Well, let's, let's try the acoustic uh, for the moment. Now, is this acoustic instrument a, a special one that you acquired somewhere? Well, yes. Actually, uh, some maker in Philadelphia named Harold Golden who makes mm -hmm. violins, and this is one of his fiddles I've been using. Now, what's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? Just name. Just the name. I think a lot of times in country music, uh, uh, more folk music, they refer to it as a fiddle. But it's, but it's the same instrument. It's the same instrument, I yeah. see. Well, you've worked with some of the greatest uh, stars in jazz, and uh, uh, one of them in particular, uh, McCoy Tyner, has written a lot of things in a very energetic style. He plays the piano and, and writes music in a very energetic style. Yeah. And you do that on, on a violin. Well, this is what I'm going to play is one of his pieces, actually. Well, before you do, okay. I, I'd, like, I'd like to have you uh, do a spiritual. Okay. And because I was talking about how the uh, um, sound of the violin sounds like the human voice. And so, to me, when I hear you play this, I think of somebody in a choir or a soloist or someone singing. Um, sometimes I feel like a motherless child or something like that. Okay, I'll play that one. It's no wonder they call it's no wonder they call those songs sorrow songs because they really are, are very meaningful and, and, and very quiet. Um, now I was talking about you working with McCoy Tyner, one of the great jazz pianist composers, and McCoy plays uh, uh, music that came from the spiritual, but uh, it's much more energetic and it's much much more of today. Uh, what do you do of his? This is a composition by McCoy called uh, Passion Dance, and I kind of adapted it for violin. I see.
Passion dance.